<laughs> what shoulder? Like we're loving this. We love it. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh gosh. You came ready. I did. I had to um clean <laughs> blenders. Ooh. Well, look at I mean, have you I mean look at this woman over here. I'm looking anyhow. <laughs> But hi, okay. my name is Daisy Dovun. I'm from Active Spaces. From Very where? excited to be Active Spaces. Active oh, hi. Spaces. Hello. Yes, I you. <laughs> but this, your sound is you keep out. dipping. I don't know if it's like you're moving back and forth or something. I'm not sure if it's the network. How does it sound now? Better. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Okay, hopefully it will work with us. Yeah. Okay, but I'm going to get right into it and start by saying congratulations on season two. Um, Thank you. You get the call from Brent Angen and they say you've been commissioned for season two. What is your immediate response? I know your reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because I actually remember being told by the live producer what your reaction was. So, yeah. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> I think I, I think I probably said like, oh wow, okay. Oh. Well, I suppose we can do it because I just looked at my calendar. I do have a bit of space for you there. So let's shoot. I think that's what I said. I don't know her vision. I don't know what they told so me. So imagine this. It's a long email. <laughs> it has all like you know, boring contractual things and things we must consider and remember this, remember that. The reply, bam, <laughs> and bye. <laughs> but when I care about what you do, you agree to the terms. Like, you know, <laughs> I was like, that was the response. Just best news ever. ever. I was so excited. I was like, yay, let's do it again. Yeah. And then when you saw the title and it said the funeral, did you not think maybe it was your character that was being killed off? No, no, I, I knew it was not me. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, wait, no, no. no. Actually, you actually kept that a secret but from the actors. Know. We didn't know what it was when, when we, yeah, we didn't know it was a funeral. It was just a hot room Christmas too. Mm. So we didn't know what was happening here. And then when they came for their first table read, I'm like, because it didn't, it didn't even say it on the script either. It just said Halter and Christmas. And then they're all sitting here. And I'm like, it's a funeral. I see faces. The faces are like, oh, oh who's dying? <laughs> Worse, I was working and I couldn't attend the table read. And and nobody was saying anything. And I was like, what? Um, <laughs> so, did they say anything about me? <laughs> <laughs> so it's very hard to keep it under wraps because we wanted that to be a surprise even when we shot um the final thing the scripts wouldn't say the funeral to just say how to christmas in case the scripts got into someone's hands so it was like trying to like be our big secret that this year the event is a funeral yeah so now there seems to be a lot of there seems to be themes of carefreeness youthfulness and playfulness in the season Rami, how would you, well, how did it feel uh, playing a character that embodies this? <laughs> playful. Well, at least I'm playful. I think, I think I'm kind of, in a way, like Auntie Grace. I'm like 20% of what Auntie Grace is uh, in terms of character because she's crazy. And I think I've got like a teaspoon of crazy. She threw a whole bucket in. So, um, but it was it was it was effortless and and I think the biggest challenge for me still having to be playful and still be able to be authentic and sincere and tell the story because sometimes when people hear that it's a comedy they they start going to they start looking for the gags than telling the story so you still need to start to tell the story in a in a very great way and I think that's what happens when someone is like a comedian you know you tell a story and people love it what resonates with them but you don't go this is a joke it's going to sell no you you just tell it in the best way you can with the um, uh, the right amount of faithfulness the right amount of commitment the right, uh, the right amount of sincerity and all of that and then you hope that in the mix the story is not lost within the comedy and i think that's what makes how to run christmas work because it is not it's not just like 
qua, 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 let's lock off the tag. There's a lot of underlying stories there that people, black families especially, that we deal with. And sometimes if you don't deal with them in, with, uh, in a song, you're gonna end up laughing it off or, cry, or crying it off. Yeah. But, and those are some of the things that you bring out in the second season. Yeah. But now what is your process with finding that balance of telling the story and bringing awareness to these very important issues and uh, topics, but also still being able to be funny and make people laugh? The balance is because it's, it's our stories. You, you don't have to dig very far. If it hasn't happened to me, it has happened to someone that I know. If it, it could be my cousin, my sister, my brother, it doesn't matter. The stories is because the stories are so authentic. The stories are so us that you don't have to go to research or find out, oh, how do they deal with this? When there's a funeral, someone sits on matrasi. I don't need, I don't need research for that. That's, that's us. And that's why when we tell the story sometimes, when, when you're a viewer, you, you don't know whether uh, is it part of the story or is it really, really us? Yes. It's because we were they lived, following the script. Yeah, we were following the script. Yeah. yeah. It's because yeah. the story is so us that um, it just comes out so effortlessly. And but then we still remember that even if it is effortless, we must still tell it as beautifully as possible so that someone else who doesn't understand the culture because we're being watched all over the world the story must still make sense they must still want to be like oh my gosh can they can you believe what they do in south africa when something like this happens you know so but the stories are effortless because they're so us we live through them every day yeah and i think like one of the important things that i've learned now working with rami and this year we got I, we got to direct here so yay. Um, <laughs> is that the actors are always prepared. And I think that's important in comedy because then you can play. Yeah. But if you're so worried about your lines and you don't know what the scene before this was, and yeah. you know, script supervisor has to be like, no, remember you came from where? No, yeah. everyone always got on set like knowing exactly what we're meant to be hitting. And when you can do that, then the fun can happen. Then you can play, then you can be like, that's great, yeah, we should try that. Or, but you know, so I feel like we have a cast of actors that are well prepared. They know their lines. Actually, you guys know you knew your lines. Yeah, you did. I'm actually, but I was thinking about it. There was never a day where I was like, "Oh, she doesn't know the lines." Yeah. Um. So I think that becomes essential in being prepared to bring the comedy, the fun, and the thing is, if you know your lines, you know the story. Like they'll know other people's storylines and. I mean, Robbie keeps saying that her favorite scene is the scene that wasn't even the one she's in. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's exciting to kind of know that you're not just reading this. You're not just going, where's Grace? Yeah. Like, yeah. you're just paging to and saying, where's Grace? It's more like, cool, what is the whole story? What is the whole world? Yeah. And then you can all kind of fit in and juggle your pieces. So you always kind of know where the story's pivoting. Yeah. And I guess that's also helpful because if you know the whole story, then you know where to fit in your character as well. Yeah, yeah. Because you know we have scenes where they're all there, and yes, they might not be dialogue from a certain, like Aunt Grace might not have dialogue in that scene, but she is there. She's present. Yeah. And if she's following the tra trajectory of her story within the bigger story, then it all makes sense. I don't have to worry like, why is Grace looking at her phone? You know what I mean? Because I'm like, no, Grace is being Grace. Shadrick is like, I don't know if you watch like the background <laughs> so see scenes where Shadrick is not in the foreground or anything you will see things at the funeral he's standing up you are pulling him down <laughs> like there's little things that he's like that front is continually does that is not scripted but it's still within the character and the world and yeah. not distracting that you have to be like guys stop, stop. Yeah. Yeah. stop doing what you're doing it's like no it's bringing the world to life like these two together are always doing something so yeah. i think that's great like the busyness of the actors is always great yeah and so remy your your relationship with Imam clementine this season was very fun to watch um you know it was you, the sisters and i'm sure you guys were off set for a couple of months before you shot this season how did you manage yeah. to back that bond and that chemistry so that us as the viewers really believe what's going on you know, uh, I mean, I've known I've known Osama Mentan for for quite some time, but it was actually the first time where we found each other 
uh, working together on, on, on how to ruin Christmas in season one. But because um, I think most of us, we fell in love with each other in the first season and we still kept our relationship going. We didn't, we didn't even know if there was going to be season two, but we still have our WhatsApp group from season one. We attended each other's this, attended each other's that, a dinner for two here, a lunch for three there, uh, someone is, someone's child is being uh, christened or something, but we, we kept the relationship going. And I think that's what has made us be so tight that even in season two, the relationships you can see that they have matured. So it is, it is very funny that since we started, uh, we shot season one into shooting season two, it has been a year. And even in the actual show, we yeah. see each other after a year, but there's been a bit of journeys in between. And it, it means that the, the relationships grew. It's not just because we met because of the wedding, now we're going to meet because of the funeral. So there's been a bit of growth. And funny enough, what we did offset paid off to contribute into what happens in season two. So you can see that now they know each other even better, you know, the Twanas or the Silos or, you know, and I think that has, that's, that's what kept us going, but we are also very, very close as, 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 as cast. I got and confused. I'm like, after season one, I was like, wait, do they all know each other before? Because I'm like, on yeah. social media, I'm like, why are they still hanging out? Like, I'm so, did. like, Sweet. today I even said, I was like, did you know Sandile? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> no. what's happening? And it's like, no, it's just the bond that they were formed. And they yeah. really do. Uh, Brades and, and elsewhere, we came to me one day asking about a scene we had to reshoot, but they came to me as Grace and Chandler. I feel like I was talking to Grace and Chandler and not the actors in front of me because they're like, no, it's her fault. Man. She's the one who flat. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, no. And I'm just like, you guys are freaking me out. <laughs> That's how good it is. Like everyone reverts into their roles yeah. and it's so beautiful to watch. That's really, really special. Oh. I think that's really special. Because we can feel it also as viewers. We can feel that authentic, that genuine relationship between you guys. What would you say was the best part about working with this cast? <laughs> you know what it is? It's, it's madness. And I and it's it's chaotic, but you know the show is a hot mess. Like if you think of House during Christmas, it's like embodies what a hot mess with family is. That's what it's like to work with this cast. I don't know what she's saying. <laughs> I, mean, I really don't know what she's saying. Let me tell you something. Like if there's someone who's crazy here, it's pretty. This is the same person who's going to come up wearing a onesie and a hoodie with ears, okay? And little muffs on her ears and a blink pink fanny pack. And there she is trying to work. And I'm looking at her going like, so is this how you came to work today? You know? And also... And, 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 and let me tell you, I have to give props to the producers and the directors because you should see when they, even when we're tackling seats, the way they describe what they want to see, you can feel the passion that they see it first. So they dream it. And then when they dream it, it's easy for us to pick up the pieces of the dreams and build on that and make it amazing. Because you can see that they're invested, they're interested. They, I mean, we laugh at our own stupid jokes. You know, when you act and you laugh at you, you think, I know I'm funny. We, we feel ourselves like, yeah, yeah, no, this is funny. So if it is convincing to us, then it's easy now for us to convince you as an audience because we believe it first. Mm -hmm. So we have to believe it first. So they believed it, they wrote it, saw the vision, believed it, laughed by themselves, <laughs> came to us, we laughed together. And then we, by the time we started shooting, it was more like, there's just fireworks yeah. everywhere. We really wanted to see this working. Yeah. But we yeah. really do become a family. Like we bigger, yeah. we we yeah. like, oh, why yeah. is this like this? Okay, but action. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is shoot. And I mean, I don't know, like every production has its downfalls, things that don't go right. But I think at the end of the day, everyone's like, no, we're making the show. This yeah. is what we're gonna do. And this December, this is what's gonna be out. So it we really are like a family. Yeah. It's like it's like there's how during Christmas and it's like how in the production, but it's fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but we always make it. That's the best yes, part. That's, that's the, 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 the end in mind. Yeah, always, always yeah. make it. Oh, I'm having so much fun. I wish I was on this cast and on this stage. 
You can like we're not even faking this energy. This is how we talk. When she's describing my pink oh. fanny pack, she's not lying. It exists. And she's and like, yes. what are you wearing? And I was like, no, oh, I'm shooting. Yeah. And there was a time where I was freezing. And... <laughs> Sorry, this is a funny story. I was dying like this. And she was like, okay, I just need us to shoot just one last, just one, one last shot. One more time. Okay. At that point, she's wearing boots. <laughs> she's wearing a white dress. Like, Why is she throwing it under the bus? And, yeah. <laughs> and we are shooting because it's summer and we just dressed for vibes. I think the only warm thing I had was my shoes. And, then, and they were not that warm. But best either. believe when it said yep. action, there she was. Okay. Love Grace was out there as if nothing. And then on cut, she looks at me like we're done, right? And I'm and just like, mm, just one more. <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, but okay, just in closing, I want to ask you guys, what are you looking forward to this Christmas? What are we looking forward to this festive? Everyone watching How to Earn Christmas the Funeral. Yes, Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Rami and I should never make a show together. No. <laughs> we should. We should. We should. Do we should do like a YouTube channel. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got to do it. That's all right. But I. I'm actually looking forward to hearing everyone's reactions, seeing everyone's reactions. Yeah. I think this is a different season, an exciting season. It and is. yeah. And I also, I, what I'm hoping for as well, because with, with the pandemic, with when everyone is unsure about what's going to happen, I hope that, you know, how to win Christmas, the funeral, um, because of the nostal nostalgic thing that it has, that it brings, it still brings hope to people and just remind them of, of you know, to just warm people up, you know, bring smiles to their faces. You know, I want to, I want someone to watch to watch how to ruin Christmas and pick up the phone and call that relative, yeah. their aunt, their brother, who is probably in Amsterdam, who's probably in Nigeria, to say, Flip, man, I can't believe I'm, I'm, we're doing Christmas without you. Or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. I mean, other people will be in Boloko and other people will be in Joba. They don't, they won't get together because of the pandemic and this and this and that. And I want it to be such a, a soul sparer and a, something that pulls someone's heartstrings that I would want someone to pick up the phone after that. And if they're sitting together to be like, oh my God, doesn't this matter? Oh, but I love you. We had so much fun about it. It's just that whole, bring a whole sense of family then, irrespective of the fights that you have as a family, the disagreements, at the end of the day, you still have each other. And even if given a choice, you wouldn't want to have it any other way. And I hope that impact stays. We just want to remember to remind people the spirit of what family is all about, mm. even in the dis dysfunctionality. It's still yeah. important. That is important. That I was think beautifully it, summed up. I was like, yes, <laughs> I think that was a perfect way to sum it up. We can't wait for the 10th of December for this to come out. Congratulations. Yeah. Ed was so excited. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. Me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Now we're gonna tease you about you. Yeah, yeah, we wanna say how oh, you're gonna be depressed. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> We've had lots of awkward moments, and now this is us. We're like, yes, see. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, <laughs> 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 <laughs>